Hello everyone. Today we will enter in module three and this lecture three. So we'll start with page ten, which is the measure of center of quantitative data. So we have three major measures of center for when the data is quantitative, the first one is the mean, which is the average of all observation, and it has this symbol, which is X, and this is called bar. So this is the mean for the sample, the for our sample. The second measure of center is the median, which shows the observation, which is in the middle of. Uh, of all the observation, if uh, if you place the observation in an ascending order, for example, from the lowest to the highest value, then the middle position, the, the, posi the observation which is in the middle of in the middle position, it's the it's called median. Then we have the mode, which is the value. That appeared most frequently. For example, if an observation uh, value had the, the, the most f frequent, if, for example, three observation had the, the same, the, uh, for example, uh, a value of three, and all the other observation had the value of one. Then the mod it will be uh, equal to three because it was the most frequent occurring value of the, uh, the number three. Then also uh, the median, the position of the median, it can be calculated by this formula, which is n is the total size of our data, and we do plus one and divide by two, and we can by this. The equation we can find the position of the median, but it doesn't. It, uh, it isn't the actual value of the median. Just it is just the position. So we have to go and check that position and see what's the value of the position. We want to find the median value. And now the measure of variability and quantitative data. It's also called the measure of variability. So it's also called spread or dispersion. The two major ones, the two major measures of variability is first the variance and the other one is the standard deviation, which are like similar. You will see now, and it's it. They are both like in a way. They what they say is that they measure what they do is like they measure the spread. Of the data around the mean, it means like how far from the mean, yeah, how 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 high is the spread of the data around the mean. So if the data is very close to the mean, the variance will be small because they they won't be too spread. But if all the data are, like the data is spread from the data from the mean. Is far from the mean, then the variance will be high, right? And then, particularly, I mean, it is we usually use variance or standard deviation when as a measure of our spread. We choose this when the this when the distribution is bell shaped and symmetric. So first, let's analyze the variance. The variance is the average square deviation from the mean. Deviation it means like like the distance, how much it deviates from the mean, and it has the symbol for the simple variance. So this is the symbol of variance. Then another thing that is interesting to know is that. When you are calculating the variance, since as you see, see as you can see here, you are squaring right uh, the observations. Um, 
the for example if the actual or the, or like the original data units is in meters or inches for example the the variance units since we squared it it will be in meters squared or inches squared uh, so this is uh, we need to take the square root if we want to explain something if we want to explain it the meaning of what we found we want to interpret it so if we take the square root of the s squared it will the unit of measure it will return to our original which was for example meters and the standard deviation is actually what we explained it, it's the square root of the variance and its units of measurement uh, return to the same as the original data. That's why standard deviation, which has S, the symbol of S or ST, is more appropriate than variance if you want to interpret the data because, as I said, you know, take the square root of the variance, which returns us to the actual unit of measurement of the original data, right? So now we'll uh, go in some mathematical definition. So the notation, first of all, so n, the small m, it means it defines that it means it is used to define that this notation. It means like um, tells us what's the total uh, number of observations in the data set. For example, if we have uh, if we have ten students, so they have ten subjects, and it means that n will be equal to ten, right? Because our sample size will be equal to uh, n, which is ten. Then uh, this represents the first, second, third uh, observation the values. For uh, for the variable uh, variables, for example, we ask them a question. So this is the value for the first observation. Their answer, for example, the GP. This is the GPA. For for example, one. It means we are in we is for example the first subject, the first student, and X one. It means it's the GPA for, for the corresponding first student. So it's. It, this is it's it corresponds to the value of the observation of the subject, and same for the second one. The two means that we're talking about uh, subject two, so n is two, and x two. Well, it, it's it's the value of the subject two. For example, it's the GPA of the second student, and etc. If we have n student. It, it goes the same way. Then the S, the capital Greek letter S, this is sig it's called sigma. It it means uh, it corresponds to summation summation notation. So it means we sum. Now the mean, which has this, this is simple mean. It it has the notation of x bar, and this is the same as uh, summing the first value of the of the, of the subject and etc up to the last one and then divide over n which is the total number of the observation which makes sense because if we want to find the average gpa for a student of the students we usually sum all gpas for all people and then divide by the uh, total number of uh, students, right? And this, the numerator is the same as this, but it's just you have to like sum from i to n, uh, y to equal to 1, up to n and xi. So this is the same as this. Then the variance, as I said, it's, it has this letter, which is s squared. And it actually, if you can see, if you, if you notice, in order to calculate the variance, we have to 
uh, have the mean. So we have to first uh, know the value of mean and then use it in the form of variance, right? Otherwise we can't calculate it. Uh, uh, that's why also, as you can see, the summation. So even from the formula, you can see that why in the, we say that the variance shows the, how much it deviates from the mean, right? Because we use the mean at we, this minus, it shows us that the actual definition that we are, we are trying to find how much it deviates from the mean. How much different are the observations, all observations from the mean. So is the x, x's are all observation and the x bar is the mean. So by doing this calculation, we are actually, if you calculating how far are all observation from the mean. That's why the x bar is the same in all summations, right? And we divide over n minus one because it's... then we have the standard deviation, which is the square root of this thing. In other words, we first we can we have to find this and plug it here, and then we plug this here and deviate. We are finding the standard deviation. And it's just an example, let's say uh, the your whole grade in a class is based on four exam. X1 is the value of your grade of your exam, the first exam. X2 is the value, the grade of your second, third, fourth, uh, worth 100 point each. So X1 can be zero up to 100, the same for the other four. If you know someone average score in the class, can you determine all four exam grades? If in, so this is what we know. We know the X bar. That's the information we know. And what else do we know? If you know the average and one exam grade, can you determine the other three exam grades? So if we know this and just say this or this, if we have like uh, three unknowns obviously we can't because in an equation with three unknowns uh, it can't be solved right but the same goes for the second one if you know the average it's the x bar and two exam grades let's say x1 x2 we can't uh, determine the other two exam because of the we have an equation with two unknowns one equation with two unknowns so it can't be solved but in the last case, if you know the average and three exam grades, we have an equation with just one unknown, right? Because x bar is known, x1, x2, x3 uh, are known because the three exam grades are known. And we just want to find the x4. Uh, I'm, I'm, that's why, I mean, you are just solving for x4 and n is four, right? So the grains are the known things in this uh, equation and the x4 is what we want to find. Also, it, the, it can be like the other way around. I mean, this can be green like this, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be the x4 that it is we want to find because it doesn't, it, uh, he is not like saying exactly the fourth, uh, the last exam grain. We can like so we have to have only one unknown if we have just one equation that to be solved. So let's do this example now. Uh, two very simple data set. This is a data set values. Uh, verse, we have such with the first one. So we want to find for this data set uh, the dot plot, the mean, the median, and the range, which is like a revision and then we will find the senate deviation so you can pause the video and do it by yourself uh, i won't exp uh, explain very analytically but if, i will show you how i did it you can pause and do it and see if you did correctly 
So the result is this. As you can see, we have three ones. So one, two, three dots. Then at, at the four, we have one, four. At seven, we have three, four. As you can see, the shape is by model, right? It has two modes. Mode one is one, mode two is seven. Ah, at the grid. We did the shape distribution. It has two like uh, tops, right? Then the mean is very uh, straightforward. We just sum all the data set values. Uh, one, 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 plus one, four, seven, seven. And divide by the total number of the observation, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, by seven, and it's equal to four. The median, you can, you, we can use the formula, which is n, which is the total number of separation, plus one divided by two, and this will be median. Or we can like place them in a ascent from the smallest to the uh, largest number, and it will be the middle number if the number of uh, our sample size is uh, odd number. It will be the middle one, middle number. But we will see this later. So the range is maximum minus minimum. This maximum and minimum. So it's six. So this is our second data set. We do exactly like everything the same way. So. And uh, as you can see, this is a little shape is like normal, little shape symmetric. We do the same again. The mean is the sum of the number divided by n, and this again four. The mean is equal to four. The median the same way. Seven plus uh, seven plus one divided by two is again four, and or we can find the median this way. Which is the middle number and the range is again the same. And now we'll calculate the standard deviation of both data sets over here. Actually, we'll just first compare it after. Uh, so, as I said, I already said this the shape is by model, and the shape of this one is pretty clear. That is like bell shape and symmetric, and points are very close to mean, which is over here, right? Well, approximately. Actually, it's here because it's a spread. And since it's close to mean, the, since the points are very close to me, it means that the variance we we are expecting the standard deviation to be smaller than this one because here the points are extreme, like. And that's why they are far from the mean if you calculate the average, which is four, right? So the mean is equal to four. And as you can see, all these are close to four, right? On the other hand, here is the mean is again four, right? But as you can see, the one is far from four, right? which is the mean over here. Seven is far from four, which is the mean. That's why we are expecting the, for the variance to be a large number or the standard deviation. See, this is the mean. So we compared with the mean. And here, all the data sets are close. Values are cl very close to our mean, which is set for, they don't, they are not far, they're very close. That's why we already know beforehand that the standard deviation of the data set one will be smaller uh, than the standard deviation of data set two because they deviate less there than the data set two. But let's calculate it in practice to see how it's calculated. So as I said, to find the variance, we need the X bar, which is the mean, right? which is equal to four, we already know this. So in this uh, list, we put the data set values, which is one, one, four, seven, seven, right? We place them. Then we want to find their difference, right? 
what's the difference? 1 minus 4. Why? Because x bar is equal to 4. So we replace 4 in all like uh, like cases because we 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 subtract uh, with uh, minus x bar x bar is equal to 4 and here we put this right these values in the first like digit uh, term the first term is 1 and so, so it's equal to minus 3 but uh, be careful we square this value which means it will become like uh, minus 3 on the power of squared which we, which we treat and make it as a positive value 9 right 3 if we square the minus 3 to the 9 so we do the same for all uh, uh, values and after that we sum 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 0 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 and it will be equal to uh, 54 so what so now after the summing we have the numerator right the 54 is the numerator since we summed all s sigma s capital sigma it means sum so we sum it so the numerator is 54 and we have to divide it by n minus 1 n is 1 to 3 the number of the, our observation data so it will be 54 minus uh, divided by 6 which is equal to 9 and the standard derivation is just the square root of 9 which is 3 right and this is actually uh, yeah I mean it's equal to 3 equal to 3. So this is for the data set 1. Now we will go to the data set 2. For the data set 2 we do exactly the same thing and we find as you can see we were right, correct, right? And we do that, I mean if you do this exactly the same thing See that the standard deviation is 1.83 for the digit uh, 32. Here, the, t the standard deviation is equal to 3. We already knew that it will be smaller. The variance, too, right? It's way larger in the digit 1 because there are the spread of the mean is far from the most of the, from the observation. So it has a data set to a smaller standard deviation variance compared to the data set one. So the standard deviation, so the larger the standard deviation, the more spread out, spread out the data is, right? Because they're further from the mean. It's more, they are more spread and standard deviation can never be negative. It makes sense, right? Because we are taking the square root of a number. The square whatever is inside of the square root it can't be uh, after taking the square root it can be like a negative uh, value because we are squaring first of all and the root uh, can't be like a negative value that's why s can never be negative s can only be zero if there is no variability in the data all the observation this is important. So, for example, if the data set was like this, right? It's clear that the mean, it will be again equal to 4, right? It's very clear. In this case, let's All observations are identical. X bar, it will be X bar, it will be 4, right? Their average. As you can see, all observations are there uh, in the same, like, uh, 
they are not like the range of the observation from the mean is like zero right because they're all four that's why s can only can the spread uh, from the s can the observation can only be zero if they are all identical right there is no variability the distance like there of the observation are zero from the mean and the center deviation is affected by outlier, outliers a lot. Outliers, it's like in the previous example we had outliers. This, this, I mean, it was far from the. So if we have extreme values in the data set, this, the center deviation will be high. So we usually don't want to like use, use like as measure of spread the center deviation if we have outliers. We prefer choosing something else. And the S, the standard deviation, works best for bell shape and symmetric distribution. Why? Because in this kind of distribution, uh, we don't have like, like extreme like uh, values, right? Because it's like bell shape and symmetric. This is the best way to use the measure, the measure, measure spread of the standard deviation. So this is like a rule that you should know. This is called empirical uh, rule. So in any bell shape and smith distribution, you will find approximately uh, that 68% of the total observation are within one standard deviation of the mean. So all the observation, the 68% of the observation are in this area are within one standard deviation. Within one standard deviation can be either uh, one standard deviation uh, less, which is here, or one standard deviation more. So within one standard deviation, it means plus, minus or plus one standard deviation. That's what it means. The same, the 95% of the observation are within two standard deviation. So this is very uh, useful. O almost all data are within like two standard deviation of the data. So this is the two standard deviations. That's why we do minus S. And so it can be like either uh, minus and plus or plus to that's what within means right and the last one is like, is like almost all of our observation are within three standard deviation other uh, three standard deviation less which is this or three standard deviation more which is this and this is the remaining the total here is 100 right all this so as you can see, the remaining part, it covers 0.3%, uh, uh, zero, yes, 0. Uh, yes, 0 0.3 percent of the total, like, so, and you know, we know that this and this, they cover like 0.3 percent, right? And when these two are equal, because the distribution is symmetric, which means that this covers 0.5% and this 0.15%, uh, sorry, 0 0.15. So if we sum this, it's like uh, the remaining. This is equal to this, because the distribution is symmetric. 0. Yeah. So this in this example, we want to measure the IQ scores. Method, no, sorry, the, one of the main difference scales for IQ stays that IQ values for the whole population follows a bell-shaped and symmetric distribution with mean mu, which is equal to 100, and standard deviation equal to 16. So we want to find these values. The so sixty-eight percent of IQs, we can like see, is pretty easy. 
we just plug the mu here. You can see this, that's why I play this. The mu here, mu minus 16 is equal to 84. Now this one is mu plus uh, 16, which is 116, and etc. Right? We want and we want to find the values between what values will leave the central 68 percent is clear between 84 and 116 95 it's like two standard deviations right so here it's like here i It has to be like 68, like if you uh, measure, like if you calculate mu minus 2 times uh, 16, which is 32, right? It, you will find that it's equal to 68. So in this here, over here, it will be a value of uh, six, 68. Oh, and similarly here, mu, which is 100, plus 2 times 16. Here, over here, it will you'll find that it's equal to 132. That's why the 95%, which covers anything within 200 deviation, is between 68 and 132. And the last one is the same, right? 99 point. You just find the mu minus 3 times 16, which is equal to 52. And the other one is that 100 plus 3 times 16, which is equal to 148. The so next question is about uh, what percentage, so let's, what percentage of the people uh, over here, of people have IQ over 180, well, 148, over 148. Where is the 148? It's the last place, right? 148 is when we calculated mu plus 3s over 100, uh, which means we want to find this part, right? Over 148. Uh, I will explain better here. So what percent of people have IQ over 148? So we want the, to find the red part, right? Over 148. This is the mu plus 3s sigma, right? Which is equal to 148. So we want this part of the total uh, uh, values, right? We want the red. We know the total area is like the purple area plus the yellow area plus the red area and it's equal to 100%. So we also know purple area is equal to the red area. I told this earlier because the distribution is symmetric, which means this part and this part are of equal like areas, they cover equal areas. So we do total which is all this 100 percent minus the yellow part and we if we do this it's clear that the purple and plus the red area it will uh, be 0 0.03 right this is the calculation is what we found equal 0.03 Person, uh, yeah, this person, no, like okay, zero, zero point three percent actually. So previously I said zero point three percent. So that's one. Uh, so it's zero point three percent. And so the red would be the ha half will divide by two because zero point zero three is this plus this and since these two are equal if we divide by two we'll find the red the area that we are interested in which is the red 
right? So 0.15% of people have IQ over uh, 148, that's the question, as answer. Then the last question is what percentage of people have IQ between 100 and 116? So we want this area, right? 100 and 116 between this. We know that the area between 84, which is here, and 116 covers the 68 of the population area, right? That's the observation. Why? Because of this. And again, by symmetry, since this distribution is symmetric, if we divide the 68% of by 2, we'll find this area and this area. Uh, sorry, we'll find this area, which is equal to this area. So we'll find the 34%. So the, both this and this area are, the co they cover 34%. So both between 100, uh, this is the IQ between 100 and 116 covers the 34% of the observation, but also the IQ between 84 and 100 also covers the 34% of the observation. So the 68 comes from the from the fact that we do like 34 here percent. Plus 34%, right? That's why I like this 68%. So this part area covers the 34% of observation, and this area the 34, the other 34. But we also we just want to cover this part, so the 100. So we are already answered to the question. Uh, the highs of college. This is another example. The highs of college age. Women are approximately bell shaped and symmetric, with almost all of them, uh, ninety of them, ninety-five percent of the observation, they fall between uh, these values, and we have to like sketch the this observation, this distribution. Is is a very similar uh, example. Let's sketch the graph of this distribution. This is how the graph will look like. Because we just uh, plug the values, right? Uh, the mu is over here. So, uh, over here, this is the green part, right? So this is the fifteen. This is what. That's why we this part because fifteen nine because this area covers the ninety five percent of the population. That's it is given like. Over here, ninety-five percent falls between fifty-nine and seventy-one. That's why here the value is fifty-nine, which is mu minus two s equals fifty-nine, and mu plus two s equals seventy-one. So that's why we know like this. We how we know found these values over here. Yeah. The same, right? I'm just like drawing to make it in case like this is this and the blue one is the so okay, I think it's clear. And find the approximate values of the mean and certain deviation. Uh, deviation. So 
notice we have one to two equations with two unknowns, which means we can solve for any of, for both of the unknowns, right? The first equation is this mu minus 2s equals to 59. The second equation is mu plus 2s equals to 71. Two equations with two unknowns, which means we can find both mu and s. So I'm just solving the equations with two unknowns. And you can do calculate this, it's very clear how, but alternatively you can find it, also the mean you can find it by summing uh, this by this, because if you sum mu minus 2s plus mu plus 2s, the, tw the s part it will like go away, the remaining part will be 2m, which is m1, m, 2, 2 m, that's why we divide by 2, right? Actually, no. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, it's exactly what I said. See, you pl this plus 1, this plus this, divide by 2 gives us the mean, mu. And then we solve it for s. So we found the mu that is equal to 65 and the sum division equal to 3. So we solve this question, this example. Some theory, uh, the quartiles divide the theta. So quartiles are something like uh, median, but you'll see what it is, kind of more like for uh, so it divides the data set into four quarters so the quarter line, lower quartile is, it has the covers 25% uh, of observation will be below it so it's called 55 50 Fifth, uh, 25th percentile, the Q2 is, Q2 is the median, so Q2 is also like, is the same thing as the median, it covers the 50% of the observation below it, so it's the 15th percentile, the Q3 is the upper quartile, and covers the 75% of the observation below it. There are many ways to find the quartiles, and each resulting in several different numbers for our purposes. Q1 will be the median of the lower half of the data. It's important to remember. And the Q3 will be the median of the upper half of the data. It that also... Yeah. It doesn't conclude, include the median, so... In the, the... When you say the upper. So, if we... If here is... You go on the right side of the median, and here on the left side of the median. They, they both don't cover the median volume. So let's see another example. Example of nine female students, if a nine female and ten male college student track to spending for a month report result. So this is how much they spend. So the first example is a data set for females. See the number of the data set. The sample size is all the number, right? Nine, n equals to a, 9. And the sample size for the males is an even number. So these are two different x you will see now. So the calculation of the median will be different in the case of when n is odd number and different when it's even number. And you will see why. So let's start with the females. The first thing is that we place the data in an ascending order, which means from the smallest, which is 121, up to the largest, which is 505. So when we do this, we want to find the median, right? It's clear that the median is the middle number 
or, or we could also use the formula but there is no reason for you to do that so there are one two three four numbers on the right side of the median and four numbers on the left side of the median and so that's why the middle number is the median when we have all the numbers of observations then the range is simply the maximum number which is 505 minus the low minimum which is 121 and we want to find the quartile 1 right which is here and the quartile 3 so the quartile 3 as you as i said previously we don't include the it's the lower uh, is the middle of the this is how the quartile will be the median of the lower half of the data, data without including the median the lower it's like the median few quarter one but it's for the lower half of the data what does this mean it means like we ignore these numbers, right? Because this is the median. This is the lower half of the theta. We want the median of the lower half. Since we have four number of four number of observations in the lower half, there is no mi middle number, right? This is why we have to add uh, the two middle numbers and find the divided over two. So we have to find the average of the middle two numbers. And this is the median of the lower half, right? It's called the other was the quarter of the quartile one. Then we want to find the median of the upper half, which is over here, without including the median. here right and without including the median we want the higher upper the median of the upper uh, of the upper half of the data without including the median that's what quart quartal 3 means so you can pause the video and calculate it like we know again the upper half has even number of duration right one two three four that's why there is no middle number it means that we have to take the average of the two middle numbers so we have to find the average of these two numbers if this quarter three you can calculate it pause the video and calculate it but i did this just to be sure as i said over here we want the upper half of the data without the median so again we ignore this this is the up this is the upper half of the data and we want uh, their median and the median is the average of the two numbers now we are in the second case this time the all observation the total number is even number Previously, it was an odd number. So this is very important to know these two cases. So when we have, when the total number of observation is like an even number, as you can see, there isn't any middle number when, okay, first we place the number from the smallest to the highest, largest, right? So this is actually 46 up to 810 after doing that we notice there are like one two three four five numbers on the left side and five numbers on the right side it means that there isn't any middle value to instantly calculate the median that's why we do the same thing that we are taking the average of the two middle numbers it's because there isn't any middle value number right when the number of the data is even number and again to find the quartile one we ignore the middle number also in this case there isn't a middle a number right so 
we just ignore uh, uh, so let's see I will use so we since there isn't a me median value the middle we just ignore everything which is like on the right side of where like here right so this is the lower data. So we want the quartile one of this data, which is very easy, right? Because this time we have a middle number, which is 108, uh, 106. This is quartile one. And we do the same for the quartile three. And the four quartiles here, we we actually this so, so just we, we just we ignore this part right. This is the quartile the upper data since there isn't a specific median value. So it's the middle number. This is quartile three actually not one. So I think it okay and. How do outliers and skewness affect each measure of center and spread? So mean is uh, not resistant to skewness and outliers. It means that if we have outliers at extreme values, uh, mean will change dramatically. Also, median is resistant to skewness. It means that if we have extreme values, it won't affect it, right? Because it's just in the middle. Now. We don't care about the values. Of the observation, we just care about the position. That's why it turns into skewness and that's liars. Then, and this is important, we use median for skewed distribution. Uh, we use well, as measure of center. We use the median when the distribution skewed distribution, which means if it's left skewed or right skewed, we'll use the measure of center of median. We want to find like. Uh, when to when to when to explain like say anything about the data, but when the distribution is symmetric, the shape, we use the mean as measure of center because it explains better. So we have to first see what's the shape of the distribution, and if the shape of the distribution is good, we use the median value uh, as measure of center, and if it's symmetric, we use the mean as measure of center. And about the measure of spread, again, we find the shape of the distribution first and the range, which is the minimum minus the maximum, uh, 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 is a reason to skewness and outliers, which means that it, it's getting affected by the outliers, uh, right? It's actually the most affected because. The outliers, it will be like a large number, which means the maximum as minimum, it will be, it won't describe the spread of it at all because you will like have to like, um, you will to like use the outliers to find the range. The next is the standard version, which is not resistant to skewness and outliers. It means that it gets affected by um, by like outliers a lot, not a lot, but it gets affected, which means that when we have extreme, the shape of the distribution is skewed, we usually don't use standard deviation. Instead, we use this, which is called interquartile range IQR, which is Q3 minus Q1. This one is not affected by the extreme values. And so when we have extreme values, we use as a measure of spread. If we have like extreme values at large, we use as a measure of spread the IQR. And as a measure of center, the median, right? And in symmetric distribution, we use as measure of spread the standard deviation. And that's measure center the mean. That's why you should like keep from all this.
So this interquartile range, uh, as I said, measures the spread of the central 50% of the data over here. Interquartile 50% of the data. This is a tox field. And this is the formula Q3 minus Q1. What so now we'll talk about box plot. What's box plot? It's five number summary of positions. Minimum. This is the minimum. Uh, Q1, lower quartile. This is Q1, median, which is the red over here. Q3, which is the upper quartile, and the maximum, which is over here. And this box contains 50% of the uh, total data and it's called IQR the box the contains like a percent of the data box of graphs are based on five number summary box will contain percent the central so this is the central 50 percent of the data from q1 to q3 line crossing the box represent the median this line represents the median and the whisker extends to the minimum and the maximum observation. So this whisker extends to the maximum observation and the minimum. So in the mini tab the, in the software program, the whiskers, these two, extend to the smallest and largest observation that are not considered outliers. Outliers are like here which is with asterisk which are with a star in minitab so they are not covering the outlier the extreme low and the extreme high values in the graph and now we'll see an example with box plot actually it's the same example where previously if you go and check it this is the data set for the males and this is the females and we want to construct box plot for each case for males and females right the box plot for okay for let's hide first this part okay i mean just check the lower half this part for the female first so as you can see the minimum is over here right which is 100 121 this is the minimum then we have the maximum which is uh, uh, but then we have the maximum which is over here which is 500 505 right and this is the median which is 288 and then we have the lower quad q1 and q3 which is one these are the numbers right it's very straightforward and the same for the males this is the minimum this is the median this is a q1 this is q3 And we can say on average that females in the cell spend slightly more than males because the median of the female, uh, females is 300, right? Over here, and the median for males over here, which is 200 approximately. And the distribution spending for females is a bit less variable, right? Uh, then for females, because of uh, this is equal to this. Uh, the mean actually is at least less variable because the mean is closer to the observation. This is an extreme point for males. The shape both distributions are fairly symmetric. So a distribution has symmetric shape. You can identify it in box plot when this and this is equal. The left uh, part this. And this, when these two parts, the line, the whiskers are equal, 
in 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 size it means that the distribution is symmetric all so we can see like also this one is a little bit uh not it's not it's slightly almost symmetric and the center of him again is it which said this thing the possible outlier is over here for males the iq is larger for female which iq is all this and the last example for today is like similar actually no it doesn't it's not the last so it's a, these are the tas it's a box but for each ta we have 18 tas the blocks will below show the final percent grade in class for all students who took the final exam by TA in charge of the uh, section. So in order to like find stuff for this example, we have to like uh, uh, reposition like rotate our like uh, blocks, but because this is the correct way to see it, right? We can notice that all TAs uh, have similar median uh, grades, right? Why? Because this, the center middle line of the box, it's over here, right? For all TAs, they are almost similar in 80s. They are all close to 80s. Uh, when we like rotate this graph, we notice that the left la tail, this is the left tail, right? Let's use another color. Let's use yellow. The left tail is la of the left side for all tails. Uh, we have it, the spring's left skewed. Why? Because the left tail. For all TAs is larger than the right tail. This means that because the minimum side is this one and the maximum, is, this means that it's left skewed. And all of them are few. These are the asterisk is the outliers, but they are not. They, are, they have only a few. All of them a few outliers. So there, the answer is there is no. Therefore, no, it doesn't matter who the T of each section happens to be because they are like quite similar since it, since it will not have a large influence on the final grades. Minimum number. And this is the final example, which is stem and leaf plot. Uh, over here. And the following is a sample done in Mintup self report college GPA of students enrolled in a large introductory statistic course. So we have one of uh, 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 14 total like GPAs. This is a sample size. And over here is the stems, the stems, and these are the leaf. So each value of the leaf represents a number, right? So 0, 1 is 2, 5, 5, 6, 7, 7. It's like the decimal points on the right hand side of each number. And all this, all the they are like over here one two three four five six all if you if we count all these we'll have one of the 14 numbers in the left side and the stem is the first decimal place for each of the 114 numbers and this why this list shows that how many numbers are the, that course the last this leaf contains so two is two because it contains zero one right and leaf unit is 0 0.1 this is the key if you remember 
of the of the stem plot. The key is also called leaf unit and it's 0 0.1. Where it is it means that that's the number with stem two and leaf zero, it will be zero point at uh, two point zero, right? And the second number with leaf one and stem two, it will be two point uh, sorry, it will be two point one. So this two it, it just says that there are like two values in leaf. This three says that they are like Actually, no, this is the position. This is this tool says that it, what's the position of the last uh, number contained in the leaf. So And this 24 is, it says that the median is contained over here, right? And we can find the minimum, uh, which is the smallest value. It's uh, the first number over here, which was, and all numbers are in the, Increase ascending order. So the smaller value it will have leaf zero, and we know since the stem is two, we two like the and we use the we have to use the key so so it will be two point. It will be two point zero right because the uh, key is zero point one. And similarly for the maximum is 4.0 because you, it was it was one to that being like 20, right? If the left unit was one, it will have 20 instead of two. So the last one is the maximum number. We want to find the median as you can see the median, the total number of the observations is like called 114. To, but we have to first find the position of the median. Since it is ordered from the mean, smallest number up to the largest number, and since the, num, uh, the position of the median, we know it's given from this formula, the total number of observation plus one divided by two, and the position is uh, this position uh, 57.5 position because the number of uh, observation is it is a even number so we have to like count all numbers right and go up to 57 and 58 and take their median so it's if we count all so let's start counting. It's over here, right? Let's start counting. So this is the first number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, blah, blah, etc. So this will be like uh, 60, 50, 50, 50, this is 55th position, 56, 57, 58. So we want these two, right? And since the stem is equal to three, and the leaf unit is zero point one, it will be like three point four for the fifty seventh number. Then for the second number, the fifty eight, it will be again three point four. So this is the fifty seventh position of the number, 
and this is the num value at 58 position. We take their average and it's 3.4, and this is the value of the median. We also want the quartile 1 and the quartile 3, right? Similarly, we do the same thing. We find the middle of the lower uh, lower data, right? And we don't include the, the median this time. And it's like like this, you will see now. So the quartile is the same thing. So is the first half of the data without including the mean, which is like this, this. The first four is included, right? Because uh, there isn't a specific median. We just took the average. So we have n is equal to uh, 57. is equal to 57 right and because it's a lower theta the total is 114 and since we don't include the the median position which was 50.57.5 if you remember we take it whatever is on the left of 57.5 which is the median so we have 57 obser uh, observations and we do the same thing. We want to find the middle position, is the 29th position, and we count all like up to the 29th position. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. And this is 27, 28, 29th. So the number is 3.8 zero right the same for the q3 since the median is at the position of 57.5 we take whatever is we take as n whatever is on the right we include like whatever is on the right of the 57.4 all the the amount of the observation so it's we have again we have 57 like observation but this time is the upper part which is starts with the four and includes all these numbers and q3 is also the ranking uh the position of the quit q3 then is also the 29th but this time back backwards right So if we will count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, This is like 29th position. So we know the position of the quartile 3, which means we use the stem and calculate the value of the Q3. The stem is 3 for all this number. So the stem, we use the stem, which is 3, the key is 0 0.1, so it's 3.7, that's the value of Q3. And again, the first call, so this is what we did. If unit decimal between stem and So this explains what we actually did. So these are like two numbers, right? 0 0.1 was a key number. This is a stem and this is the leaf. So we are, if the key is 0 0.1, the number what we have is 2.0. The second number is 2.1. And when it's like one, it's like Two, like you, uh, you can like, or you can just like cut to like uh, calculate the number like tw say twenty, and then multiply it by point one, which will give two, right? 
again 20 multiplied by 1 20 20 and 21 so you can just multiply by these numbers instead of three it's way easier so you can say that this is 20 and this 21 then you now multiply both numbers by their key unit and it will give you the actual number and that's all for today. Thank you very much.